Hello and welcome to another installment of our Women in STEM series. My name is Kaylee Peel and I'm the manager of strategic partnerships for the Linda Hall Library. Today our guests are Caitlin DePenning and Andrea Mulvaney from Henderson Engineers. Ladies, welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks for inviting us. Absolutely. So we'll start with you, Andrea. Would you mind sharing a brief overview of your career trajectory? What led you into STEM industry? Um, did you have any influences? What did that look like? Sure. Um, well, I can say I didn't think about it much until maybe my senior year of high school. And it was a high school science teacher who started directing me towards engineering. Um, as I was looking at colleges, I thought I wanted to get as far away from home as possible. Um, so I applied everywhere and had a high school science teacher who actually applied for a scholarship for me for engineering at Kansas State University. It was a teacher scholarship that teachers could recommend students for. Um, so I ended up getting that scholarship and that's what made me think about it a little bit more. And uh, this teacher had been uh, pretty influential in my um, high school career. I took every class that I could uh, and just thought, well, if, if he's got confidence in me that I can do this, maybe this is something I should, should try out. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I think the power of mentorship is huge, um, so I, I completely resonate with that. It is. Um, what about you, Caitlin? So my dad growing up had a drafting business that he would do from home, so I literally grew up with like house plans, just like filling in our living room, um, and so I, that's just what I saw growing up was house plans, and I thought it was interesting, and I liked it, and my dad um, being in that world, he said, well, you should probably consider engineering more than just architecture. Um, and I didn't really understand at the time, but I was like, all right, well, then I'm going to do architectural engineering. And I honestly, I don't think I really knew what that meant other than it wasn't just architecture and it had engineering, so together. And so I'd already, I started looking at schools um, that had that program. Um, growing up in Iowa, none of the schools in Iowa had it. So I was looking as close as I could to Iowa, and so the, the Kansas schools did. Um, and so it was my senior year of high school, and I was actually visiting family in Seattle and I remember they had this kind of unique kite like I had the two string kite and I was trying to figure out how to do it and I kept like backing up and backing up trying to get the kite to go and, and it kept spinning and falling and spinning and falling and I eventually backed up far enough that I ended up in front of their neighbor's house and I was trying to fix it and the this random stranger from his deck reaches calls out and he goes have you ever thought about being an engineer and I was like yes I'm actually going to school for engineering um, and he had been watching me this whole time as I was just trying to figure something out um, and that's kind of how I had always approached things growing up was like I wanted to know how it worked I was curious and so I thought it was really interesting that you know something I'd already thought about doing was reinforced by some random stranger that I had no concept of and, <laughs> and he had no history <laughs> of my background um, and so I went in that's and I think I figured out what engineering was more after that but I had already made that decision mm -hmm. that it was something I was go going to pursue as an adult. Thank you for sharing that. That's a very cool story. Very <laughs> validating. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So what does that experience look like for both of you? When you started your careers in STEM and now to present day, has the landscape shifted? Has your experience changed? Would you mind sharing some of that? Um, absolutely. I, I think the landscape has definitely changed. Uh, I've been in the industry now for almost 20 years. When I graduated, uh, there were not many women in my class, uh, maybe 10%. So class of 35 from K-State and three to five women in that class. Um, when I started work, I was the only female in that office. So going from that to where we are today at Henderson and working with you know, teams of all female engineers leading projects together, um, that landscape has definitely changed. I'm sure it feels really empowering too, to see that change over time. Yeah. What about you? So yeah, I'm almost 15 years into my career and I didn't start um, doing what I'm doing now right away. So I had the first couple of years of mainly just construction project management, which is actually even, I'd say, less female population or percentage than there is at Henderson in, in the design world. So I'd say I went from that to a design world where, where I am now and it was actually like refreshing to see <laughs> the amount of ladies I got to work with. but. Um, even then, uh, I was pretty much immediately forced into a position where I like ha had to be comfortable being the only female in a room of upwards of 20 people at times, and not just that, like a young female. So you had to figure out your voice early, um, and you mm -hmm. also had to be comfortable saying something. If it like for me, I had to be comfortable to like raise my hand and say like that makes me uncomfortable, or 
you're you're excluding me or that that wasn't a, something that um, was very appropriate to say um, to anyone, let alone a young female. I was like, there, there's times where I was kind of, I felt singled out. Yeah, I, I have gone into meetings in the past um, with a male architect and everyone assumes that the male is the engineer and the female is the architect and so had to, to speak up and mm -hmm. say, you know, when they ask, is the engineer present? No, that, that's me mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm the engineer, so. Yeah, and it'd be little things too, like, all right, boys, let's go, and you'd be like, and girls, you know, like it's, it wasn't intentionally offensive, but it was like, I'm here. Don't forget about yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, there's a ton of self-advocacy that you guys are responsible for, um, not because you should have been, but because you were the first very, you know, very literally in mm -hmm. the room. And hopefully that was a life a lesson <laughs> for the people <laughs> that you were working with. And it sounds like you really have been able to uh, be an integral part of that shift within Henderson Engineers, too, which I think is really great, which I'd like to, you know, talk about more right now. So would you mind, you know, giving kind of a high level of what each of you do in your role in Henderson Engineers, but also talk about what that culture change has looked like. I, I truly think, you know, I've been following along um, the journey of Henderson on LinkedIn and on your social media, and I can tell that you, your, your company is very focused on that inclusivity across the board, not just women, but people of color, LGBT, and members of the community. And what has that change looked like, and what would you like to share about it? I think it's something that we're still growing and learning in. Uh, we started our, and, and we were both part of that, starting the women's uh, resource group, Empower is what we called it. So we started that in about 2013. I think it's approaching 10 years. Um, yeah. Which was the first uh, people resource group that we had at Henderson. Um, and we encouraged more than just females to be participants of that. We wanted the male conversation. We wanted them to hear and to understand maybe what some of our struggles had been and how to approach those conversations, how to think about it differently and how to be more inviting. Um, that resource group then grew to two additional resource groups uh, that Caitlin has been pretty involved in as well. Yeah, there's, there's two additional of which I'm a uh, co-lead of Unite, the LGBTQIA group um, within Henderson, which similarly to the Empower group, we encouraged not just people that identified within that community, but also advocates and, and allies for those and anyone that really was just looking to learn. And uh, it started out with kind of a, a, just a grand idea and we've, we've grown over the last few years just tr developing and mm -hmm. how can we as a company support people that are interested in being part of these people resource groups and, and what are you trying to get out of them? And, and honestly, what we've noticed the most is community. Uh, folks that come and join and find this community realize, like, I, I'm joining a firm to do engineering first or whatever the role may be. Um, but now I also have this community, and it um, lets them be their true selves. And I think in that process of being their true selves, they bring their best self as th whatever role is also um, because they know they don't have to, to hold back. They can... Mm -hmm. They can be the person that they want to be and whatever their role is. And um, the, the feedback we've received is that that's um, been wonderful for everyone involved and helped them want to stay at Henderson. It's helped bring people to Henderson. Like literally we've had people come and say, um, I'm applying to work with you because I see this and how much you're supporting it and embracing it. I and know that it's a safe and environment. Yeah, uh, I know you're going to welcome me for who I am and I want to be part of that um, mm -hmm. because all of us that have jobs, that's that's part of who we are, but it's typically not the only thing that you identify as. And so when someone can come to work as an accountant, an engineer, whatever, and be, um, uh, it's been uh, it's been really great to yeah. be part of that and, and hear the stories of how people have uh, blossomed as whatever their career is at yeah. Anderson. Yeah, I think it's, it's grown more internally than what we originally dreamed of. Um, it's also grown externally. So our third affinity group is racial equity and learning. Um, they go and by real. R they go by real, yep. Mm -hmm. So all three groups do some community outreach. Um, we have, in the past, it's been on hold since, since COVID, but we've done a junior engineering day. So we're inviting students from what started as our employees, bring our, our kids to learn about engineering and what that is um, and expanded to partnerships with some of the local school districts. Uh, so the Junior Engineering Day and then volunteering with Wonderscope. Um, There's a lot of lead to read 
Yeah, Lead to Read has been another good way to get engaged with some of the local schools. Mm -hmm. And just being out in the community and showing representation to somebody who might think of, might not think about themselves as being able to do, to be an engineer or be um, an audio video designer or, um, you know, somebody who likes to play video games. What, what can they do um, in our world? So just being out in the community and being involved has been yep. a great way to share that message as well. Yeah, and it sounds like you're doing a great job. You should be very proud, <clears throat> you know, not only authentically investing in your team, but in your community, that says a lot about what you're really growing. And obviously it's working because you're growing, you're, you're building more groups. Like <laughs> it's working because more people want that. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, we've got our How Do I Become series and we've got a few other career exploration tools focused on helping high school and college age students meet professionals, learn about the companies in our region and learn about the opportunities. And we know that young people do want to feel invested in. They do want to feel like they can be themselves. They do want to feel like they're seen. So the fact that you're building that culture is fantastic. And being out in the community is important too, because if you're not, you know, in a family of engineers, or if you're in um, a, a certain, you know, socioeconomic status mm -hmm. or a part in the world, you probably don't know engineers. You might not become one, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so that exposure is super important, and you're building authentic relationships with the community, which is is awesome. So yeah. congratulations on that. Thank That's you. amazing. So moving into like into the next stage of that, what would you like to see our community from a more holistic view do? How can we better, you know, support? young girls, um, people in the LGBT community, people of color, how can we better do that overall? And what would you like to see in the, the near future for our region? I know that's, that's a, a loaded question. question. That's a big yeah, question, but, yeah. Yeah, tell me your dreams. <laughs> it, I'll be honest, that's hard, a little hard for me to answer because I already think that I see young um, students coming in transitioning from high school into college with so much more knowledge of what engineering is than I felt like I even had oh, um, an opportunity. So I, I almost am a little jealous because like I would I would have loved to have some of the shadowing opportunities. And I mean, we both came from smaller towns where I think it was such a, like almost like people it was thought, unknown. Yeah, when I said <laughs> I was going to Kansas, they literally were like, the people said where and for what, like they didn't understand. Um, and so um, I don't, I'm, I'm yeah, I, I think <laughs> more conversations about it, um, especially in the um, areas of our city where you know, you know, there's there's great school districts where the kids have all the opportunities in the world. They have robotics classes, they have engineering classes, drafting classes. Mm -hmm. They're getting exposure to it. Um, so reaching out to those groups who don't have those same opportunities and making sure they they get some of those opportunities and h have that um, just ability to even think about going to school for engineering or drafting or uh, you know whatever ca career in in stem um, i think having that conversation and and being present and and representation, and that's representation, such a key thing in so many in, in so many boxes, you know, for, for people growing up, whether they see their family s situation, the person of the same color of them, of another um, gender that they identify with, but like just seeing that and what you're doing with this and giving them opportunities to view it, even if maybe it's not in their school, they can they can find something online and watch it and just see that they're they're not dreaming of something that's an unattainable, like there's I people do doing, yeah, I can yeah. do that too. Um, yeah. so what you're doing, keep doing it. <laughs> well, I, you keep doing it too. And yeah. I think that there is, there needs to be more collaboration in our community. And I think that we're all kind of having those same conversations. Yes. So yes, having more conversations and creating more access, you're totally right. And there's a lot of initiatives that the library um, is working on for 2023 that we're very excited about, but I'm also excited to see how you guys grow and, you know, become change makers and leaders in our community too. So I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, I hope to see you guys again soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank for you. Us. Absolutely.